Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.10 has some big changes on the horizon for its flight model and combat. Cloud Imperium have released a post flight and fight upcoming improvements that goes over some of these changes. We're going to summarize and talk about the flight model changes specifically in this video. They are trying to make the flight model more dynamic in 3.10 with thrust efficiency curves, aerodynamics and jerk all added and modeled better. Cloud Imperium have said we've made critical updates to flight performance for all ships with thruster efficiency curves drastically changing the way thrusters work in atmosphere. Thrusters now lose efficiency and become much weaker. This is dependent on the ship and the thruster type to some degree, but ships in general will have much weaker thrusters in atmosphere and will behave differently. Ships now have individually simulated aerodynamic surfaces that contribute various small forces to the motion of the ship. Each force is dynamic and bespoke, allowing us to simulate wings of various kinds, as well as flat plates and lifting body forces. Ships with wings are now able to stall, make level turns, lose speed in tight turns, and benefit from various aerodynamic features. The aerodynamic interaction with the wind is now more detailed, and you can expect the wind to push and pull ships in more complex ways. Breakable parts now affect aerodynamics, so a ship with a broken wing will no longer fly straight. We've also increased the complexity of the thruster system for ships. Taking damage, powering down, or losing a thruster will now put the ship out of balance. You will experience unwanted rotations and instabilities in the ship's control until you repair the damage. Jerk is a core change to how ships move, both in space and within atmosphere, and is a measure of how quickly a ship's acceleration changes. Previously it was an infinite quantity, now it's finite, which means thrusters do not respond immediately to changes in acceleration. You can expect weightier feeling ships, but with similar levels of maneuverability. So that's a whole host of new additions, and Cloud Imperium did go on to say how this would impact the game. This will drastically reduce thrust efficiency in atmosphere. You'll see a dynamic difference between flying and fighting around planetary bodies with atmosphere compared to battles in space. Since the aerodynamic forces are stronger in 3.10, flight is much less defined by a ship's thrusters and more defined by its aerodynamics. This will really push the difference between space and atmospheric flight and add more depth and variety to Star Citizen. So I, I think that's really, really important to say. So some ships are going to excel in atmospheric combat, whereas others are going to excel more in space combat. So th there might not be the same meta. So one ship that's great at one might not be great at both. Expect every ship to behave differently and with a lot more character. For example, each ship has its own aerodynamic stability, so the Gladius will feel more stable when compared to the Hawk, which can turn faster but is much harder to control. Most ships are stable when flying forward, though strafing in atmosphere could cause various instabilities. The new aerodynamic system also supports animating wings and parts, which they've not been able to do before. Ships like the Reliant, Hawk and others that have moving wings will have completely different aerodynamic feels after their parts have been animated. One aim of this is to enable more engaging dogfighting. As they reduce the combat efficiency of a ship at high velocity, they want combats to be engaged at lower speeds, providing you sort of more time to launch a flight maneuver or counter an opponent. So what's coming up next for the flight model? Their goal is to improve the vehicle experience further as they continue to work on flight characteristics in atmosphere and space. Supporting animated aerodynamic services also paves the way for working control services which will come in a future patch. Alpha 3.10 brings the very first changes setting the stage for upcoming releases and further enhancements to the overall flight experience. They're also going to further refine the difference between maneuvering thrusters and main engine engines. The concept is that maneuvering thrusters are built for quick pulses of high thrust for directional changes, while the main and VTOL engines are built for sustained thrust. This means that if you use maneuvering thrusters for sustained thrust, such as hovering for a prolonged time in gravity, they will have a lower thrust output and could overheat or misfire if used too long. This will further differentiate between ships in terms of space and atmospheric flight. Aerodynamic ships like the Gladius will be better suited to flying in atmosphere, as the lift generated by their wings will negate the need for maneuvering thrusters to keep them aloft. But if a pilot wanted to treat a Gladius like a helicopter gunship, they could only do this for a limited time before straining the thrusters, whereas the Valkyrie with four large VTOL engines would have no problem. Once they're happy with how atmospheric flight, thruster efficiency and jerk works, they're then going to be looking at G-forces being applied to the pilot to increase the sense of thrill and speed. Then you can try and take your ship to its limit while firing and outmaneuvering attacks 
uh, without trying to fall on unconscious, that sort of stuff. For now, you should familiarize yourself with the new mechanics and test them excessively once you get your hands on them. They're going to be taking a closer look at feedback and taking suggestions into account for further iterations of those new ship behaviors. And obviously, it's going to really affect how the AI and NPCs will react as well, because they're going to be using those new systems too. So my thoughts are for 3.10, we're going to see major changes on how each individual ship flies, both in atmosphere and space uniquely. Ships will feel more weighty, thruster damage and overheats will really affect your flight experience. The new flight model is getting in a position and getting ready for physicalized components and that new resource transfer power system. There have been a lot of criticisms of the flight model and the atmospheric flight and these changes could go a long way to addressing them. Having thrusters overheating in atmosphere or if you're not using your ship properly, having it not fly correctly, having your aerodynamics affect it, having these overheats really 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 hamper your day um, if you're flying your ship wrong. I, I really, really like the idea of. And if they can get this sort of like combat in a place or this aids combat to getting into a place where players are maybe engaging at slightly lower speeds or at least closer um, distance wise to each other, that would actually be really great. At least something I'd like to see. I want to see the prettiness of the ships while I'm fighting them. I think that's uh, one of the main things that Star Citizen does very well. It's very pretty looking and there's no way that you want to go back to just sort of like seeing dots on a HUD and strafing past them really, really, really fast or jousting with them. Cloud Imperium have said that they've got the 3.10 targeted live release for July at the moment. As far as I'm aware though, that's probably the first week of July, but it's going to be based on how the Evocati and PTU phases go. But once out, everyone will be able to try out that new system. Tweaks are certainly going to be needed to get that into a better place though. The vast amount of balance for all the ships is unlikely to be done until later in development as well. Um, and over a few patches, you'll see this sort of flight model tweaked even more and hopefully getting it to an even better place. But feedback on how that sounds to you, especially when it's in your hands, once you've been able to test it, I suppose, is the best time to give feedback, in my opinion, as you're not going to be able to get a feel for it unless you're actually um, have it in your hands, testing it, uh, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. But your feedback is so vital to the development of that flight model, so make sure you get involved with that um, when you can. And there's going to be bugs and stuff as well, so, I mean, it's, it's an alpha, it's an alpha for a reason. I'll be getting a video out looking at the combat and targeting changes shortly as well, but what do you think? Are you looking forward to thruster changes, aerodynamics, and jerk in three? 3.10 and that flight model improvement hopefully do you think the flight model could be in a better place for 3.10 overall or do you think there's still a long way to go do you think there's going to be too many problems with it do you think this is going in the wrong direction whatever your thoughts i'd love to hear from you in the comments below every month we have a ship giveaway for june it's for an Espirit of our and prowler dropship and star citizen game package kindly supplied by cloud imperium just comment on any of my videos made during june to be in for a chance of winning that oh what's that what am I shilling for this month, you ask? Well, the same thing I shill for every month. Uh, if you need a VPN, then check out NordVPN. It's a cheap, fast, and has a load of benefits over free VPN services. Consider it for security, privacy, protection, content accessibility, and even to help with bandwidth limits. You also get a shipload of money off via the links below. I am NordGamer. I was going to go with board VPN, but that didn't sound right. Um, Nord, Nord Gamer sounds perfect for my shillingness. Also, if you're looking for a gaming PC or a gaming PC upgrade, instead consider Shadow. It's a subscription-based service that starts around uh, $11 or £12 or some euros, and that streams a Windows 10 system to your device, be it another PC laptop, phone, or TV using the powers of the internet, and there's a wide range of hardware to meet your needs. It means you don't have to maintain your own rig, so if you dream of 4K gaming and you don't want to break the bank, it's an option. All their services are very suitable for Star Citizen, but there may be a waiting list based on what country and state you are in. 